It might look like it's a cool fall day, but in fact, it's 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 70% humidity. And today, Jacques and I are gonna show you how to make your first compost pile. So Jacques, I've been living here for about two years, actually. Yeah. So it's actually a two year anniversary, it might be right now. Actually, yeah. So hopefully. September. Yeah. In that whole time, we have just basically done the lazy man's compost, <laughs> which to be clear, works, my friend. It, it does. does work. But that being said, we have a lot of gardening here. We wanna do some more sophisticated activities, such as proper hot composting. Yep. That's what today's video is about. And something we wanna share is you don't have to do composting any particular way. Exactly, there's so many different ways to do it. And like here we have a pretty good starting point and we'll talk exactly about how to build the perfect pile. And you can go really as deep down the rabbit hole as you want. You can, oh, yeah. you can try to optimize for the perfect carbon to nitrogen ratio, et cetera, and we'll get into that. Or you could literally do this and it actually works somewhat well as long as you get down into the middle. So let's take a look at this pile. We'll take a look at the compost bin and let's talk about how compost happens. Building your first pile, you need to know about four key ingredients. First, you have your classics, your browns and your greens or your carbon and your nitrogen. So kick it off with nitrogen, Jacques. Nitrogen is your fresh plant material. So think fresh grass clippings, tomato cuttings, anything that's alive and green, like everything here. Everything you see here in its current state would be a green. Then you have your browns like straw or dried leaves or dried grass clippings or all the mulch that you see right here, it is very, very high in carbon. Then you have your air and your water. You need air because this is an aerobic process with air. So you can do bokashi, which is anaerobic, which is what I used to do back in the day in my old space. Great for apartment gardeners, but that's not what we're talking about here. So you need air, good airflow, which is why this design has some slats in the side. And then water. Water, without water, you don't really have life. And just like us, the microbes need the water to survive. So as they're kind of all reproducing and replicating, that's generating all the heat. So if your pile dries out, they die and your compost dies with it. Exactly. So how much volume do you need to start a pile? Common recommendation is three by three by three or one cubic yard. This yep. is a little bit bigger than that. I'd say honestly, pretty good recommendation. Can you get away with less? Yeah, it just requires more management. So let's go back to the pile and we'll talk about how to actually construct your layers in your very first bin. So back here at the pile, there's two ways or philosophies, I think, to go about building and layering, trying to hit the perfect carbon to nitrogen ratio. It could get really intense. You can get really <laughs> intense. So Jacques, why don't you lead us off with the simpler way? So the simplest way and the way that I usually go with is just 50-50 browns and greens. So you put in a pile of tomatoes, put an equal pile of brown in via straw or whatever you have. That's the easy way. Sometimes you can even skew towards a two to one of brown to green. Yep. But the scientific holy grail, uh -oh. so to speak, is <laughs> 30 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio. And this is where we have to enter nerd mode. Okay, now here's the wrinkle that most people get confused about when building a pile. It is the fact that you wanna hit this magical 30 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio. So yep. 30 parts carbon by weight, one part nitrogen. But here's the trick, grab something from the pile. It's just anything, whatever you want. Okay, so you have a sunflower stalk and I'm gonna grab, I think this was some <laughs> mint, okay? Actually, this is a uh, watercress. So you see That's this right. big old root from the pond. Now, these have different carbon to nitrogen ratios. Even a brown, like straw or sawdust or even wood chips. Wood chips have a 500 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio. Whereas grass clippings are something like 20 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio. And in the end of the day, you don't know what this is and what that is. So you can get really lost in the mix if you think you, about it too much. You can get lost in the sauce and some people do. And honestly, they find the holy grail. Yeah. You actually can create incredible compost if you are that precise. Hats off. Hats off. <laughs> I've never done it myself. I have to be honest with you guys. I try to just go, not necessarily chill mode, but yeah. just like, hey, let's be reasonable. I'm not hitting Excel and calculating my volumes and stuff. So we put a chart up for you so you can kind of nerd out on it if you want, but let's just start to move this over there and talk a little bit about surface area, which is weirdly important. So you could put these sunflower stalks directly in the compost, you could even break them up and put them in. And yes, it would break down. The question is, how long would it take? Very long time. Yeah, and what's the reason for that? It's because it, the microbes are what break it down. So the more surface area, the more action for the microbes to get onto the material and break it down. Yeah, so if you shred it up or chop it up in some way, you certainly don't need this behemoth that we have here. 
but it's just going to increase the overall surface area of this material, which means more microbes across more of the surface, eating it up quicker, reproducing, breaking it down. Yeah, and a quick tip if you don't have a chipper shredder, just throw all your stuff on the ground and get a flathead shovel and just chop it up like just that. Just stab it, yeah, just stab it and you're good. Yep. So we're into chip shred mode, and then this all goes over there to build the pile. So take a look at what we have broken the sunflower stalk down into. Actually kind of weird, it almost looks like a manufactured product yeah, with the uh, <laughs> sort of cellulose squishiness in there. Sunflower is a weirdly interesting plant, but you can just see how much easier this is gonna be to break down. So we have a lot more to do. We'll see you over at the pile. Whew. Ugh. A little bit of chipping, a little bit of shredding, <laughs> but we have a lot of material here. So we have some of that pre-ground down browns mostly with the sunflower stalks looking really nice. We have some kind of floaty greens and browns here with some vining cucumbers and such. Then we have uh, an input that we bought basically for like 10 bucks, right? Yeah. Just a bale of straw. Just an old bale of straw. So that's a pure brown. Most homeowners have a hard time getting browns. We especially have a hard time here in San Diego because we don't live in an area with deciduous trees that the leaves fall. So Jacques. Yeah. Layers, talk to me. Layers, so the first most important layer is actually soil, yep. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It allows water to infiltrate somewhere and it also is where all the soil microorganisms live. Mm -hmm. So then they're already here and ready to start your pile. Next up, you need something chunky to help allow airflow at the bottom. This is perfect because it's not broken down. Surface area is good, but too much surface area leads to a wet pile that doesn't breathe. So at the beginning, having a nice chunky layer is perfect. Yeah, we talked about surface area. That doesn't mean you should grind everything to a fine powder and then put it in. Of course, you'd be making like organic cement at that yeah, point in time. So this is a really good way to start. Typically, you're thinking two to six inch layers, brown right. to green. This is very fluffy. So this will sort of compress down. So I wouldn't worry too much about how high yeah. this is. So I'm just getting a base layer in here. I like to start with brown, green, brown so that you have the sandwich to soak up all that extra moisture. Yeah, I agree with you. Speaking of, you do need to have a hose on hand. It's true. You wanna be wetting this down as you go. Nothing, nothing wild, but just like enough yeah. in each layer that you're giving those microbes something to actually act upon. At the start, it's a little looser, but basically you want the pile overall to feel like a damp sponge. Mm -hmm. So this shouldn't be filled with water, yeah. but it should be at least damp. In my opinion, tomatoes are the best thing to start a compost pile with. They're very high in nitrogen, which means that it's going to heat up the pile very quickly, very fast. And this time of year, in the fall, or in the summer, I should say, you probably have a lot of tomatoes and you're wondering what to do with them. Best time to start a compost pile, get some fresh nitrogen into that pile and get hot real fast. So when you're adding a material like straw, you don't really want to add it in in this big old clump like this, because it's matted it's gonna be a big block that's kind of kind of have an anaerobic pocket. So I like to come over, hopefully you don't have allergies, and just kind of brush it off into the pile like this, break it up a little bit, because it's such a flat material, it really can compress and mat, and you just don't want that to happen. So this is the final layer of my browns before I go back to the green layer that Jock's got with those toms. I've got my shears out, so I have one of my favorite uses for shears. You come through and just quickly cut these down just a little bit. You don't have to be precise or anything like that. Just come in, just give it a little bit of this, just to kind of break it up a little bit. These go in, if you've been counting, as green layer number two. We'll take one of our slats and actually slide it in here. So I guess this is another nice moment to mention that the best compost pile is the one that's made with the most ingredients. So alternating your brown source, your greens, is gonna just make your pile have the most nutrients and it'll just be better in the end. And you've got basically fresh leaves from your place. Yeah. What's cool is you actually can make leaf mold from that. Oh which yeah. Which is its own, that's its own beast. Yeah, I've never gone down that road just because I basically don't have enough leaves. Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> neither do I. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can build like perfect sandwich layers, four inch, four inch, four inch but you're going to mix it eventually, right? So as long as your ratios are right, you're pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jacques has a cool method too, because he's not going with that super precise model. So basically, what happens if you add too many greens? If you add too many greens, it'll start smelling bad, and it'll probably be wet, so then you just add more browns. If you have too many browns, that means it's probably not heating up, and it's probably very dry. Very dry. So you get that perfect balance. You don't have to worry about it. If it smells, add more browns. If it's not heating up, add more greens and just make sure it's moist enough, like we said, basically like a damp sponge. And that's all there really is to it. 
What are you, what's your opinion, Jacques, on those compost activators? I feel like I've had success with them. I was gonna say, I've used one in the past when I struggled to get it really hot because I didn't have tomatoes, basically, and it worked. Yeah. I think it's just basically a bunch of alfalfa meal and it gives that boost <laughs> to your pile. I've also heard people put Coca-Cola because really? you're adding sugar oh, and then the yeah. microbes break it down and they heat it up. That makes sense. So really, it's don't worry too much about it. It's about learning and it's just fun to kind of do this mm. in the end, honestly. I have an experiment I want to run. I want to throw some squash directly in what oh. will eventually be the middle. Ooh, full on. And actually, pro tip, if you're putting kitchen scraps in your compost pile, putting it right in the center is the best because it'll decrease the chance for rodents. that will find it on the edges and start eating it. If you put it in the middle, it'll get hot really fast and break down. Yeah, so if I put it on the edge there, right. I'm never gonna see that <laughs> look anything different than the way it looks right exactly. now. It's really not gonna break down. Exactly. So I threw about six in there, that's probably enough. Gave you the old. <laughs> I call you Ratatouille. Fruit Ninja. Oh wait, reaction time. Reaction time challenge. <laughs> Too, Too early. early. Too early. Right here though. Ready? Oh! Right in half. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I have the accuracy to 50% cleave it right down the middle? If you throw it perfectly. Oh! Who's doubting? Problem solved. Why am I doubting? Problem solved. So we've built it up pretty dang high. Jock's giving the final water. I'm just kind of moving some stuff around here on the top, but you got to know what to do once you actually build the pile. For the most part, it's sort of sit and wait, but we do have this Rio Temp compost thermometer actually up on our store. One of my favorite compost thermometers, long, long, long guy. Jam it down in. You want that bottom to be right around where the middle of the pile is. Pretty sure I just hit a squash there. <laughs> but what you're waiting to see is roughly about 120 degrees by the next day, Fahrenheit, really, Perfect compost is above 140. But as right. long as you start seeing the heat climb, you're in a good spot. So you know how to build your compost pile, but there's a lot of mistakes you can make when composting. So this video right here will show you the mistakes to avoid. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing. <laughs>